you, you must be feeling great about your cricket at the moment. It's been a pretty good month or so for you, hasn't it? Um, it's been, yeah, an awesome month so far. Um, it's been a long pre-season, so to start playing some games has been amazing and then an unreal um, Aussie series to be a part of and contribute to that was really special. And then um, the, uh, it's probably been a dream start to the Big Bash campaign and I'm just loving being back around the group again. And um, while it's still early days, um, yeah, really confident with, with the side we've got this year and then excited for the rest of the competition. On a, um, on a personal note, can you put the last month down or anything? Like, is it sort of just being, like you say, a really big pre-season because obviously later start in some regards or is it the confidence to get that Aussie spot back? What do you all put it down to? Yeah, it's a tough one to pinpoint, but um, for me, it's, it's something I've probably shown glimpses of over the past season, but just haven't been consistent enough. So that's been frustrating for me. So um, probably just simplifying um, how I go about my cricket Um I think I've matured a lot as a player, as a batter and um, learned how to construct my innings a lot better, especially in T20 cricket. So um, that's literally keeping it as simple as possible, playing to my strengths um, and, yeah, not overcomplicating things, which I've fallen into the trap a bit before. So, um, yeah, tough one to pinpoint, but for me it's literally just simplifying it. I was going to say that like that maturity part probably forms a lot as far as simplifying and, you know, the mental side of the game. Like I think we all kind of forget how young you were when you when you first played for Australia and whatnot. Like and it does sort of take a while. Like you don't really hit your prime as far as maturing until late twenties, let alone mid twenties, right? Yeah, it's taken me a while and it's been a frustrating um sort of journey with lots of little glimpses, I suppose, and lots of starts, but yeah, just not consistent enough. So for me, yeah, it's confidence is a huge thing and, and certainly being back around that setup and stringing a few games together for Australia has given me a lot of confidence. Um, and then a few other little things working on the sidelines with some mindset coaches some yes, sports psychs and that sort of thing all helps along the way as well. So um, yeah, keep going with that and, and hopefully a few more performances to come. How long have you been doing like the mindset stuff and the, and the like sports psych stuff? Probably only um, the back end of last year and this season. So yeah, 12, 18 months. And it's something that was really quite new to me. And uh, I mean, cricket's such a mental game that I thought, why not sort of tap into that aspect of it? Um, so much we can get caught up in our own minds and um, especially when we're batting, um, like I said before, overcomplicating things. So that's been a really nice thing to work on and, and pretty refreshing way of, of looking at the game of cricket. I'll let someone else have a go on a second, but last one for me. Did, was that something like you personally chose to do or want to do? Or was it something that was suggested to you by SACA or CA is something that might be um, really helpful in terms of just taking your game to the next level? Um, yeah, we had a, we've had a mindset coach on board at SACA for probably two years now. And initially I was a bit hesitant, sort of um, not sure how much I can get benefit of that. But um, from him doing a few group sessions with us and then sort of um, liking what he was saying, had a few one-on-one -on -one sessions and it's just gone from there. So um, yeah, something that the SAC is really passionate about and lots of the players have jumped on board with now. So yeah, like I said, with cricket being such a mental game, it's, it gives us a real advantage and is something that, yeah, I think lots of sports people should sort of tap into. Absolutely. Sweet. Thanks. Uh, yeah, talk us through uh, that fielding and bowling performance. It um, was extremely clinical. Is that something that you felt like you've been sharp through the preseason and you can take into the tournament? We uh, pride ourselves on our fielding and I think the first two games have been outstanding and it really helps It really helps the bowlers when your fielders are backing you up and um, from a captaincy point of view, um, everyone's super clear on their plans and uh, most of the time executing, so it makes my job a lot easier and um, that's been a strength of the, the strikers for the last couple of years, our bowling and our fielding and uh, we're pretty confident that with our attack, we've got so much variety that we can take wickets and restrict the opposition as well. So um, add Shooter back into that when she comes back into the squad. And yeah, we're really excited about what we've got as a group. Uh, talk to me about Darcy Brown. I know a lot of people um, have mentioned her and she's certainly on the rise, but the pace, some of those bounces she was bowling, um, where can she get to, do you think? Because she's still such a young bowler. Yeah, Darcy's a special talent, that's for sure. And I hate facing her in the nets. I always sort of try and avoid her. But um, she's still so young and so raw. Um, and just that ability she's got to not only run in and bowl fast, but swing the ball is 
is so special and um, she didn't have the greatest of games in our first game against the Thunder, but just the way she bounced back yesterday and, and led, led the attack for us, she was outstanding. So um, yeah, for her, just, she's so, so young and so raw and she's got so much potential to go. So I think she's going to be um, a main player for many years to come and one that will terrorize opposition batters for yeah many, many years. With the two and O start, um, it's such a wonderful platform um, because it is hard to chase when you go behind in a tournament. Um, how important is it to now capitalise on that great start? Yeah, it is. These sort of tournaments, uh, you can sort of get into little little runs and little confidence. So to start the the tournament with two runs is really, two wins is really important. Um, and yeah, it's just there's going to be a lot of travel coming up for us. A lot of um, yeah, a lot of cricket coming up. So to get those early wins is crucial and then keep that momentum going um, forward. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's the type of competition where anyone can beat anyone on their day. So you've got to just keep rocking up day after day and, and getting the job done. Thanks, Talia. Hey, Talia, uh, congratulations on, on the start to the tournament. Obviously, 2-0 is fantastic. H have you enjoyed the extra responsibility of being captain of the side for a side you've competed for for so long? I have. I've absolutely loved it. I sort of, yeah, jumped at the opportunity when it was presented to me. I, um, I'm adjusting still to all the sort of extra bowling meetings, all the, the extra stuff added with it, adjusting to that. But um, yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. And I think that it's, it's helping me a lot um, on field as well, just sort of that little bit of added responsibility keeping me in check as well. So um, I'm loving it. And I've also got some great support um, with Dane on field and then um, the coaching staff have been amazing. So um, it's gone, it's gone really well so far. I was going to say Dane is obviously a fantastic addition to the team this year and she's got so much leadership experience. Have you been speaking to her much about leadership styles and things like that? Yeah, we've had a few conversations. Um, she's really good in pre-meetings when we're um, analysing and coming up with plans. And then I've been gone up to her a few times and I've just been like, if you see absolutely anything sing out, come over to me, I'm, I'm eager to learn. Um, so she's been, she's been popping in every now and then with a few ideas and she's just got such a smart cricket brain and um, is someone that I'm, yeah, looking to, to pick her brains a fair bit going forward because I can certainly see myself learning a lot of her. You've always sort of been quite a powerful striker of the ball, but you seem to have added an extra sort of aggressive nature element to your batting this year. Is that something you've tried to work on a little bit? I think in the past I took unnecessary risks early um, and they probably yeah, weren't the smartest things. It was, I was getting too caught up in sort of boundary focused or trying to hit the ball too hard. Whereas, yeah, I've just simplified my batting, try to play to my strengths early, try to keep it along the ground early and get into my innings before I go sort of up that next gear. And um, yeah, it's, it's working so far. And um, I suppose when I've got into that mindset, it's, it just sort of, helps naturally that those bigger shots come when I've got myself into the game, got myself used to the wicket. Um, and yeah, I think I mentioned it before, just a lot more uh, mature and um, learning how to structure my innings a lot better in T20 cricket. Another player who looks like she's really enjoying her cricket at the moment is Amanda Jade bowling really well. Uh, what do you see in her in terms of her role in the team and just how well she's bowling at the moment? Yeah, she had, she went over to England and had a really good um, series in the hundred and she's, come back here and picked up exactly where she left off and um, I reckon she's come back from that a different with a whole new confidence she's speaking up a lot more in team meetings she's in complete control of her plans I'll throw the ball to her and she'll tell me exactly what she wants exactly what she's going to bowl and and she's got a new confidence about her this year and I mean leg spinners are incredibly important in the game and I've sort of given her a role this year to bowl a bit a few death overs and she's just thrived under that um, and then not to mention she's a pretty handy batter as well. So um, she's this type of player that you love to have in your team. How's Bridget Patterson been uh, telling everyone about her catches? Is, is, she's got a pretty good highlight reel only a couple of games in. She's got an incredible highlight reel. Um, there's been a few of us getting stuck into her. We want some better celebrations though, because that one on the boundary was unreal and she was, um, yeah, it gave us nothing with the celebration. So that's something she needs to work on, but we see her do those sort of catches and fielding efforts all the time. So um, from my point of view, it's what's the batter's strength? Um, get Bridget in the hot spot because we know she's going to pull off some screamers. And just finally, obviously, it's been a great opportunity for the squad to bond being down in Tassie. I mean, I think we saw you guys went up to Mount Wellington the other day. How good has it been to be able to have this time as a group to, to really come together before the travel starts, you kind of said? 
Yeah, it's been really important. Um, I suppose from our point of view, it was a little bit tricky early on because obviously Darcy and I were away with the Aussie squad. There was a few doing quarantine, our internationals. Um, so we didn't have a lot of time, but it's, um, especially with the lockdown happening as well here in Hobart, we've spent a bit of time as a group, had some cards nights, had some movie night, burger nights, that sort of thing, just enjoying each other's company and, and bonding as a team because there's a few new faces am amongst the group. And um, yeah, we, we think we've got a pretty good culture here at the Strikers. So it's been really nice to spend some time as a team.